Solopunk, one of my favorite fusions of arts and politics. Solopunk is everything from a positive imagining of our collective futures to actually creating it. It derives its name from the cyberpunk genre and all the other punks in a sport. Real quick, there's steampunk, which focuses on the industrial revolution and steam-powered tech. It's one of the most popular after cyberpunk. There's diesel punk, focused on the designs of the interwar period. There's atom punk, focused on atomic power. Steel punk, focused on late 20th century hardware. Stone punk, which is Neolithic. And there's even now punk, which is set today. Soul punk is a shining vision of a positive future, grounded in our existing world that emphasizes the need for environmental sustainability, self-governance, and social justice. It's a movement dedicated to human-centric and ecocentric ends. It looks beyond the limitations of capitalism and beyond the current rift between humanity and nature. It's a futurism that focuses on what we should hope for rather than on what we should avoid. Sulpunk recognizes that climate change, the consequences of centuries of damage, aren't avoided in the future, yet it still manages to incorporate hope. A future where we've got a lot of work to do, but we're doing better, we're using technology for more uplifting ends, like seed bombing drones and solar ovens. Sulpunk emphasizes real world application. It's all about what we do here and now, from DIY projects to larger organization. Soulpunk is also very aesthetic, as I'm sure you've realized. It uses a lot of nature motifs and takes inspiration from Art Nouveau, upcycling, and Asian and African styles and artistic movements. Side note though, let me talk real quick about what isn't Soulpunk. It isn't slapping flowers and trees on concrete buildings or steel skyscrapers with some green on it. That's greenwashing. It has the appearance of sustainability, it's actually really damaging to the environment. A lot of water is used to maintain those quote-unquote green buildings, and they often aren't built with sustainable or durable material. Don't get mad, guy. In the short time it has been conceived of, Sulbank has found a place in contemporary media. It's a literary genre after all, but it has been retroactively assigned to other things since the term was really popularized in 2014. Sulbank, for example, includes films like Miyazaki's Princess Mononoke, or the show like Starhawk's The Fifth Secret Thing. Cyberpunk might be grim and depressing, exploring a world of unchecked corporate power, but Sulpunk rejects it entirely. It emphasizes collective living and the fulfillment of both nature and humanity in a mutually beneficial relationship. There's a full history of it linked below, where basically around 2008, a blog named Republic of the Bees published the post from Steampunk to Solarpunk, which conceptualized Solarpunk as a literary genre inspired by Steampunk. There were a few articles and works here and there, but it gained more steam, or should I say solar, with Miss Olivia Louise's Tumblr post in 2014, establishing some of the aesthetics of solar punk. Quote, a world in which children grow up being taught about building electronic tech, as well as food gardening and other skills. People have come back to appreciating artisans and craft people, from stonemasons and smithies to dressmakers and jewelers and everyone in between. Her post was later referenced by Adam Flynn in his Notes Towards Manifesto in late 2014. He describes the difficulty of being a futurist under 30, watching the world dive down the path of cyberpunk with the ever-present existential threat of climate change. So the punk to him is the only alternative to denial or despair. It rejects the individualistic, unsustainable approaches of some futurists who refuse to acknowledge the limits of energy on Earth. So the punk is about ingenuity, generativity, independence, and community. It's suffixed by punk because it opposes our existing world. It creates local resilience, authorities be damned, from rooftop solar to guerrilla gardening. Finally, a group called the Solar Punk Community published Un Manifiesto Solar Punk in 2019. It's a short article written in Spanish that basically reiterates some of the previous ideas, albeit more succinctly. As for my relationship with Solar Punk, I've been into it for a pretty long time. I can't remember exactly where I first heard about it, but it was probably on Tumblr. It was also on Tumblr where I was introduced to the basics of revolutionary and progressive politics. Although Sulapunk never had a particular political ideology assigned to it, it's been embraced by liberatory ideologies of all flavors, from social ecologists to positive anarchists to green socialists. The philosophy of Sulapunk and the politics of anarchism are practically built for each other. Anarchism emphasizes personal freedom and collective liberation from hierarchies, authoritarianism, and exploitation. It seeks, as an ongoing project, common ownership, voluntary cooperation, horizontal organization, and mutual aid. 
Anarchism has generally been ahead of its time on many political issues, from queer to women's liberation, and its approach to ecology has been no different. Solar punk can easily be synthesized with anarchism and many of its various streams, as it explores the possibilities of liberatory technology, localization of production, an end to destructive and wasteful consumption, and the reorientation of our relationship with society, work, nature, and ourselves. It all sounds pretty gooey and feel good, but I want to briefly address those that have lost hope in a better world. We're stuck thinking that this, largely, is the best that we can do. This is idea in politics these days that imagination has no place in our quote-unquote pragmatic, no-nonsense world. Which is just false, humans are flexible creatures capable of a whole range of social arrangement. If everyone limited themselves to the confines of what is, we wouldn't be where we are today. It's time to take some steps forward, with a variety of tactics in hand. One of which is art. Art has a tremendous influence on us. Music, books, paintings, TV shows, movies, etc. They shape our ideas of what humanity is and what humanity can be. While there have been many major examples of soul punk art and entertainment yet, I think we can change that. There are interesting stories to be explored and debates to be had through art. Imagine a novel that explores the different sides, dimensions, the debates on meat consumption in the soul punk world. Or a comic that follows the community's journey as it seeks to rewild and resuscitate the surrounding ecology. Or picture this. Maybe alongside a game that imagines a horrifying endgame that maintains capitalism, like Cyberpunk 2077, we imagine an uplifting, yet still challenging game that exercises our ability to balance the needs of our local ecosystem and deal with the difficult decisions and conflicts that arise as we reorient our place in the world. Could call it Solarpunk 2033 or something. There's a free idea right there. There's so many ways to incorporate Solarpunk in your life and in your movements. It's pretty compatible with prefiguration, which I realize I need to create a video about because people still seem to have some weird assumptions about what I, as an anarchist, want to do. More to the point, solar punk is truly something you can put into reality and practice and spread. Solar punks can help create the future they want in various ways. From basic DIY living, to maker workshops, to creating and expanding equal living and local autonomy in our towns and cities. Solar punk is a key piece in a mosaic of possibilities, the sense of human adaptability, and the protection of nature, which our present world is organized to destroy, but our future world must prioritize. Solar punk is a future with a human face and dirt behind its ears. Peace. Thank you for watching. For my patrons, I have a new post up that features a bit of lore from a solar punk Caribbean world that I've been working on for a short story collection. I've got some new patrons, so Thanks to Bilal Shamim, Gabriella Runnels, Justo Socialism, Brian Lowe, Suavocado Jones, and Jane. If you'd like to join them, see exclusive posts, and get a special thanks, check it out at patreon.com slash true. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with your fellow solar punks. Feed the algorithm. Check my previous videos for the fascinating topics. You can follow me on Twitter at underscore Saint True, and check my monthly blog posts on Trinidadian politics and stuff on saint-true.medium.com. Thanks again. Peace.